guys, welcome to or welcome back to Ampersand Unique Gifts and Home Decor. So if you like trash to treasure, thrift flips, auction finds, thrifted finds, booth resets, and all things DIY, you're definitely in the right place. And I would love it if you would subscribe so you'll be notified of future videos. But today we're going to take three wall shelves that either have pegs or hooks, and we're going to give each one of them a new look using different materials. So stick around. See how they turn out. Let me know which one's your favorite. And if there's anything that you see here or even something that you just would like to see, let me know in the comments and I will go into a little bit more detail in future videos. So thanks for being here. See you on the flip side. So our first project is an MDF piece. And I guess it's not really a shelf. I'm sorry. It's a wall hanger. And I'm going to go ahead and take off all the parts and pieces. I'm just going to do it by hand with this tiny little screwdriver because it has little bitty screws. And I don't want to risk stripping them with a power screwdriver. And then I'm going to put all the little pieces and their screws into a cup so that I don't lose them and I can get easily to them later. If you saw my... my last video with the shelves then this is the same kind of top it's almost like a plasticky type stuff and here it's a little bit wet but I have this one little place that looks like it's wanting to bleed through it must have had a little bit of oil or something on there but I'm once I get it dry I'm going to use this transfer and I'm trying to use up all of my old items so that's what my theme has been for several of these videos lately is getting not only my project stash under control but my product stash under control so this is the transfer japonica and I've had it long enough that it's part of the ones that still came in the rolls so I'm gonna cut it apart and decide which pieces I want so with any of the transfers like this you never have to use it as one full sheet so even if it comes in eight separate sheets or one big giant roll you don't have to use it that way you can cut it apart and do whatever works for you so I'm just picking several different designs and thinking about how they can lay out and then I'm ready to go if you have never used a transfer before then they come with that backing sheet you want to always make sure that you keep that on there until you're ready to use it or they will stick to things that you didn't want them to I was just making sure that I didn't have it upside down because that would have really been a bummer if it had been upside down from the hooks I uh, they all come with a transfer stick this is an IOD transfer iron orchids design so it does come with the plastic stick I tend to save them because that is my favorite so even the ones that come with just a little wood stick or I got one the other day was literally a popsicle stick so I go ahead and just tend to use my um, my plastic ones that come with the IOD here I had um, part of the transfer did not stick so I'm using this next piece to cover up where it tore that's one of the really nifty things about cutting them apart is you can layer them however you need to so that you can get that design in there and it's going to cover any boo-boos I've got two things going against me one is I did not seal my chalk paint or my I'm sorry my clay based paint I'm using Debbie's design diary uh, clay based paint and it needs to be sealed and if you let it dry like overnight you let it kind of cure you can get away with this but this is all done in the same day and you can see there I was burnishing it and getting a little ahead of myself going real fast and I accidentally pulled up a piece but two things one is this is an older transfer and I feel like they kind of lose some of their ability to stick the older they are um, and like when I say older I've had this probably uh, two or three years and it's just been sitting there um, so I think you know dust and stuff kind of gets in there and it loses its ad adhesion is that a word um, so I had the piece I cut off from the top or the bottom and I save all of those until I'm totally done because as you can see I was able to cut a little piece and cover up where I accidentally pulled that off and now I'm going a little slower being a little bit more careful and I'm using that plastic back or actually I guess it'd be the top part of it and I'm using that to burnish it in and what that means is you're just looking for any place that might not have adhered and you're going to rub it with that and get it to go. So here I am actually using a sanding block and it's just an old sanding block that I'm using a new piece of sandpaper over and I want to get the edges where any of my transfers might have kind of come over the edge and you can see I'm going in the downward motion 
to make sure that I don't accidentally tear one of them going up, but it just kind of cuts them if there was a part that was hanging over the edge. The other thing is I kind of got my paint over the edge and then very lightly, I'm barely pushing down, I'm just sanding over the entire piece and it just smooths out that clay-based paint, but it also gives my transfer just a little bit of a distressed look. And I'm literally just taking a wet wipe here and cleaning off my dust because that way when I seal it, I want to make sure all that dust is gone. And you want to make sure that you sand, sorry, that you seal the clay-based paints and that you do that every time. But also, even if I was using one of the ones that had a built-in sealer, I want to make sure that I seal in my transfer. So I am using polycrylic. I'm out in the shop today, and so I'm using the items that I have readily available without having to stop and go in the house and dig through things. And polycrylic is what I have, and I really do love using that as a sealer here. It gives that nice matte finish and doesn't give it any extra sheen. And just putting the hooks back on, I really didn't do anything to them. They were kind of chippy, and I just thought that it was the perfect look. I love those little um, glass knobs. So here it is, all finished, project number two. So this is a shelf that I picked up from the auction, but it lost one of its little pegs. And I happen to have some that were from another project, and they're just a little bit different. So I'm going to use three of the new ones rather than use two of the old ones and one of the new ones. And then I'll save those two and put them in my stash in case I have something coming forward that needs those in the future. And this one is really dirty. These things have been sitting around waiting for their upcycle for a while. So I'm just giving it a good scrub before I even really start doing anything else to it just to make sure that I've got all the grime and grit off of it. This backing is hooked in here with a, um, with a brad nailer, so they're little bitty brad nails. And I'm going to go ahead and take off the top part of it. I want to be able to work on it and not get paint. I'm going to keep that natural wood. It's really pretty. It's in great shape. I love that little uh, plate rail that's in it. And I feel like this is probably a handmade piece. Um, and then moving on, just getting the hangers off the back of it. Again, tiny little screws. So I'm using that tiny little screwdriver and I am actually saving those in the same cup that I have all the other pieces so that I don't lose anything. And I thought, well, since it was hooked in with a brad nailer, I'm just going to start with my detail sander here and try to get as much of that off as I can. It is paper. So it's not like that plasticky coating that was on the first wall hanging that we did. This one is actually paper and you can see some places where it started to peel up and I was afraid as soon as I painted it that it would get really bad and it would get peely. So I decided to take my hammer and just go ahead and get that out and then I take, um, I lightly take my hammer along the edge and get all those little brad nails out of there. Um, so here it is, yep, it is definitely paper and to be honest I think it is wallpaper border. So that's what the 90s had uh, our big apple and we also had um, the wallpaper. Everybody was putting wallpaper and using wallpaper borders everywhere. So I'm just using, I'm spraying it and kind of letting it soak in, getting that top layer off and working at it. It actually did not take very long and was, you know, oddly satisfying to just use my scraper and go along and I would just spray it with water and let that soak in for a second and then go at it again. So out here in the shop this can of paint has lasted me forever and this is the Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the color linen white and it um, it's really kind of thick and gummy because I've had it a while every now and then I have to stop and pick out a chunk or two but it's going to be perfect for what I'm doing here and I don't care about the brush strokes I'm using a chip brush and I don't care that it looks a little textured because I want to go with something that kind of looks a little old and crusty and you'll see why here in the future or if you saw the thumbnail and so here this is Tim Holtz decoupage it, it's um collage paper and it is very thin like a tissue paper so I went ahead and cut the size and now I'm going to use my polycrylic instead of a sealer first I'm using it as a decoupage medium so if you did not know you could do that it makes an excellent decoupage medium so I'm just going to kind of start with a little bit I'm not going to go across the whole piece but I'm going to do about a third of it 
and I'm going to lay my paper down. You want to be careful because this will rip because it is very thin. Again, it's like tissue paper, but um, it does have a little bit of leeway, so it kind of um, granted me the opportunity to pick it up and lay it down a little bit, a few times actually, and then I just very, very gently, um, you know, making sure that I'm not pushing and the risk of ripping it, I'm just very, very lightly pushing it down into that polycrylic. And I'm going to do this all the way across the board. I'm going to do a little bit of polycrylic and then I'm going to push down and do a little bit more until I have it all the way across there. Because it is thin, that's why I wanted to really make sure that I use that white in the background. Because any time that you use something, if you put this over something that's not white, regardless of the color of your collage paper, that color is really going to bleed through there and it's going to lighten up your design. And yes, I had something icky stuck on my brush. Uh, so I am using, um, I'm not using a chip brush here. I wanted something with a little bit softer bristles. So I am using a synthetic brush here. I have no idea. I'm sure it's something I just picked up from the hardware store. So it's nothing fancy. After I get it finished, I went ahead and polycrylic the whole thing. And then after it dried, I am taking that same linen white and my chip brush and I am just pouncing the paint and giving it some texture. And I'm going right up over the top of that paper, just kind of barely in there. And I'm, yes, it looks like I was eating in my mouth, but actually I was probably singing because that's my MO as uh, to be just loudly singing whatever's playing on the radio while I work. And then I'm going to sand this. I'm not trying to get the paint off. I'm just trying to make sure that it's smooth. It's kind of got some bumps and bruises just where it's a, you know, an, an older used piece. And now I am actually, when your workshop is so full of projects and stuff that you need to move through, I'm actually on the floor on a drop cloth painting this with my Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Black Spray Paint. And I give this two different coats and then I am just using again that same 220 sandpaper wrapped around my old sand brush or sand block and just distressing it a little bit and getting rid of any place where it might have looked like it dripped. And now I'm using the Sweet Pickens beeswax in the color dark and I'm just putting it, I'm, I go over the whole thing so it's kind of a consistent, um, uh, whatever you call it, sheen. But I'm really doing it so that it catches and kind of ages where I got into the wood when I distressed it because I don't want it to have bright new looking wood and everything else look old. Now I'm going to, even though this has a polycrylic on it, I am actually covering everything with the Sweet Pickens beeswax in the color clear before I go in and I add that dark everywhere. And this is just because the edges are real white, but the paper has a little bit of a yellow aged look to it. So I wanted to blend everything in and kind of have it have that same color so that it all looked like it was old. So we have our postcards matched in with the rest of our color. So I sanded the back of it and then wiped it off. That's why it looks wet. I took it with a wet wipe and that's just to cover where the paint kind of, um, spilled a little bit around the edges when I was painting and that's kind of the same reason here you can see it it uh, shakes the camera on the table when I hammer there but it I just where there was paint kind of chunked around on the side it wasn't wanting to go in there so I was just giving it a little bit of help and now I'm using my brad nailer to get those in there so if you've ever wondered what the top of a brad nailer looks like here you go you're welcome uh, but I do, I go all the way around it, and this bread nailer is a battery packed. It's so much easier than using one that hooks to the air machine, but it's really heavy. So there you go. I have to use two hands with it. Taking that same beeswax to just refresh in the wood, I gave it kind of a light sand that was more to clean it than it was anything. And now I'm just sealing it in and bringing back that beautiful color with that beeswax. And of course, obviously, put the screws back in, reattach it. There you go, in case you wondered, there it's how you put screws in. And now my pegs, I even though they were originally black, I did also paint them with that same Rust-Oleum spray paint because I wanted everything to be really the same color. Here you go, that's just thought I'd throw my glue bottle down. And I, before I put them back in those holes, well not back because these are different ones, but before I put these in those holes, I want to make sure there's plenty of glue on there so that they will stick really well. 
and I um, decided I need a little bit more, taking what was left on my finger and getting that little lip. And all right, come on, Sarah, just stick that in that little peg hole. There we go. All right, ta-da. So just wiping off the glue, taking a wet wipe and getting all the glue that squished out. But here is our final piece. I really love that distressed black with that natural wood and the way these old photographs look in here and it blends in. I love that it's not really, you know, a gender specific type piece. It could be anywhere. Uh, it's just, I think it's so beautiful. So our third piece is a wonderful looking shelf as it is. It is the biggest one of the ones I did. Again, I think it's rather dated. So if you love this piece the way it was, forgive me because I am going to redo it. So we're going to start with taking the hanging hardware off, but this entire piece is put together with brad nails. So there's really, I mean, I would have to really uh, just almost destroy it to take it apart to do anything. So we're just going to get the hanger off and then we're going to start working on it. And the paper on this was glued on really well. And even spraying it with my water did not, um, yeah, nope, spray, try again. And not as satisfying as the last one. This one was actually frustrating. So I broke out the sander and said, ha. Huh, I win. So I did actually finally get it completely smooth. And apparently I'm going to show you the whole thing where I'm sanding. This is what it's like to sand. Um, and I had one, um, one peg that just, I mean, it was really in there, but I wanted to get it out in order to do what I'm going to do. So I took my heat gun to kind of warm up that glue, rock it back and forth, and I finally got it out and painted it. We're using our same paint and because I, this is just a backing, I'm not really worried about going all the way to the edges because I'm going to show you what I do after I get my paper on there. So it is completely dry and now I'm going to wait and let you stare at that. Okay, here we go. Here's our decoupage paper. Are these chickens not the best? I love this. And I'm going to take this, um, actually I love the other side too, but my cows didn't quite fit in the shelf. So I'm going to cut off the chickens and then I'm going to save my adorable little cows for a different project. I actually have a canvas that is behind me on the countertop behind me that I'm going to put that in and then build a barnwood frame to go around it because I just think these little watercolor cows are so cute. Meanwhile, let's go back to my adorable chickens. Oh, I love that. I love chickens. I have chickens. love chickens. For that matter, I have cows too. But anyway, um, so I'm going to take it all the way down and around the edge. And I'm just going to kind of take my scraper and cut it kind of rough edge. It. Oh, no, I took the transfer tool. I knew I took something. And just kind of going across there. And it's okay because once I've got it all decoupaged, I'll sand off any piece that went around the edge anyway, but I want to go all the way down and get as much of that pattern in there as I can. So here, tear, tear slowly. Now, don't get rid of that until you are totally done, or if you even have another one, still save onto it, because sometimes they rip and you are so glad that you have something you can patch with. So definitely hold on to that until you know that you are done. You don't have any other of the same pattern and you're definitely not going to need it. And using the same idea I did with the collage paper, I'm just going to go a little bit at a time. So I'm holding it with my one hand to make sure it doesn't shift and I know exactly where it goes. So I want it even up across the top. So I knew that that's how I had it. And I'm going to just put a starter strip and I'm, something I'm going to do different with this. It's a little bit heavier paper and I'm just going to spritz it with my water mister bottle. And so I don't remember who showed me that first. I think it was Yvonne with Ginger Trick Rehab. That might have been the first person I saw do that. Uh, forgive me if it was someone else and I'm calling out the wrong person, but um it is right that it makes it very nice. It's a lot easier to get those wrinkles out. So if you've never tried that, you just lightly mist it, get it a little bit, and then you can kind of bring it down. And, you know, you'll want to be very gentle, just like you will with any decoupage 
paper, but it really gets those wrinkles out. Now I am going to distress this because that's the way I roll and I will actually sand it. So a little bit of wrinkles, not too bad. You'll see at the end when um, I have finished that it has those wrinkles in it, but that's okay. It kind of lends to the look that I wanted. So here I go again, just doing a little bit at a time and getting all of that smooth and ta-da. And I'm actually going to carefully push it down into that routered edge because I want to make sure that my paper stays down and it doesn't just peel up out of there after it dries. And I, like I said, I wanted to use as much of that color and as much of that pattern as I could. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to seal the entire top to give it that extra protection. So I've made sure that everything is adhered from the underneath and now I'm just going across here and I'm sealing it really well to get that paper down and hopefully eliminate any risk that it would rip if somebody were to clean it or that it would rip when I do the next part of it. So you can see on the edges, the paper didn't go all the way from side to side. So what do you think I'm gonna do? Oh no, it doesn't go all the way to the end. That's okay, because here we are. Now again, here I am in the shop. I did not want to go in the house and get different colors, so I didn't have anything kind of the blue tint that I needed, but I mixed together about three or four different paint pieces. Um, I've just got like little bits and pieces of paint left. I may finally just dump them all together into one jar. Um, but I'm carefully going around just down the edge to make sure that I get that because I'm not going to paint the rest of this. And just side note, FYI, PSA, chip brushes, worst brush ever to try to do an edge. Um, but I just very carefully went through and that's because I'm going to keep the rest of the shelf natural color. The only part will be this. But I, after I do the edge and I get it smooth there, then I am going to pounce it, stipple it, make rough edges, everything around the edge of that decoupage paper because I want to blend in where that edge is so that you really can't see it. And I've got to also then try to get this color which has obviously a little bit more green to it than my original paper. So what I'm going to start doing is adding that color throughout that paper. So I don't want to get it on my chickens, but I'm just going to start adding it everywhere within there. And so that that blue, and I'm going to take my water bottle and kind of make it so it's not so thick and it runs and blends in. And then I'm even going to take a wet wipe and it, that's just kind of for texture. So I'll take a dry paintbrush, which I think is actually what I'm doing right now. And I just take a dry paintbrush and smooth it out to blend it. And then I will end up, and as I try to pick up the hairs from the chip brush, so I have this big box of chip brushes. That's how come in all my videos lately, I keep using these chip brushes. It's kind of nice just to have ones that if you accidentally, there I am with my wet, wet wipe. If you have something and you don't get it cleaned out and you throw it away, they're not very expensive. But also, um, they're just handy. I mean, that's just what I keep out in the shop and most of my really good brushes are in the house. So again, just trying to make sure that I get a good edge here and that then I begin to do my same, you know, stippling and getting it ready, I'm doing a careful edge down there. Sorry guys, I guess this part's all kind of pretty self-explanatory. And I have carpal tunnel and it's like reaching the point where my shots are wearing off and my hand keeps going to sleep. So. Fortunately, I am able to use my left hand for things so it doesn't get too bad. I'm covered in paint. I absolutely got filthy doing these. I think that was because my mom said one time that I stay so clean. I obviously got hot because I see that I've taken my sweatshirt off. It was so cold when I first went out in the shop, but the more I work, uh, it warmed up. Plus, my husband had turned the heater on, so that did not hurt at all. It made it very bearable to be out there. So I'm just, I, you know, I thought it needed a little bit of white kind of blended in with it and now I'm going to take my dry brush again blend that in I think the next thing I do is take a paper towel to it pretty much it's not an exact science there's no you know really uh instruction you just have to let it go and blend it together I'm 
going to sand the edge where the paper kind of wrapped around the bottom of it and then I'm also going to give a good sand to the back just to clean off where it might have picked up a little extra paint just from where my workbench was dirty from where I'd been painting. So I'm very lightly going over this and that's what I was talking about. You can kind of see some of the wrinkles but the paper itself that watercolored paper kind of gave a little bit of a distressed look anyway. And then I'm just taking one of the pegs and poking those holes so that I know where they are because I'm going to come across here and I'm going to seal the entire thing. Uh, some of the paints that I used and had mixed together did have built-in sealers. Uh, like, for example, I used the Debbie's Design Diary JB Ray Vintage Cottage Color Paint Blue, and it has a built-in sealer. But I also had a couple of the chalk paints, like that linen white from where they take it home and display it in their beautiful home, that it doesn't come off. I want it to be as strong as that what was probably a wallpaper border also paper that was on there when it and this was an auction find i don't know if i said that or not those of you that are new might not know that i actually work part-time as a clerk for coke auction services so here i am i'm gonna put my pegs in there just like i did before exact same process the only difference is i'm not gonna torture you and make you watch me do all of them and i do get that one in there a little bit faster uh, one thing that is different though um i had a little trouble the second one here did not want to go in so i'm going to use my sanding block sponge as I shake the whole table and I'm going to just hammer it in there. But I absolutely love the way it came out. I think that it is adorable. I love this one. It has a big wide shelf on the top and five pegs across there. So it's a wonderful space to help you organize and hang decor or anything else you want to. But I just love them all. Let me know which one was your favorite. And if you do not already subscribe, I would love if you would subscribe and click that notification bell. Thank you guys.